Okay, uh, I just gotta get something in my pocket. Uh, all just right, gonna, oh, you get like, yourself together. I know, I know, it's like always, we're doing really, well, we're doing really well too. Don't worry about it, we got it, we got it. Just, uh, I mean, people will still be coming, it's okay. Okay. Stickers, okay, so, okay, all right, here we go, sorry, all right, all right, okay. Yeah, um, so. Yeah, you know, this was such a mess, Karsten, you know, I don't like being on you know, I know, Jen, you know, I really don't like it either, but I, you know, I can't even really fall back on the self incarnation of ADHD and my public shaming for all my shortcomings, of which there are many. Because it really is just the way things are this time. No one is at fault, there are no real mistakes have been made, we're just here to do the best we can. Of course, I know that. Haven't I said the same to you many times when you're worried about something in a community event? Well, yeah, I guess so. It, well, it must, be, it, it must be something we've got going in the, open, in the open source way guidebook for community management. Just, I got it right here. Let me look it up to confirm. Must yeah, have. Carson, we're in the middle of a presentation right oh, now. Oh, right, sorry. Um, can that wait? You know, isn't it getting a little old to keep referring back to the old guidebook? Um, we've really envisioned what an open source community and its events can look like. Just take a look around you, mm. KubeCon. Come on, folks, don't you agree? This place is amazing, yeah. <laughs> nice, oh, nice, okay. Well, but what do you mean by old guidebook? We just updated it to the 2.0 version last year, and the chapter on governance, it includes the very evolution from projects such as those in the cloud native ecosystem. So you see, it's really all just derived from what we've all been doing for two and even three decades, and we wrote it down in the guidebook. Here, it'll take me just a few moments to find it, okay? <sighs> no. Well, what did I do? What did I say? Karsten, do I really need to unpack what you did? Well, no, I suppose you don't. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not myself this morning. I'm just really stressed and just falling into conditioning, you know? It, and that was pretty condescending of me and dismissive to, to treat your hard work in all of these communities where you've been enabling massive cross-pollination with your community event strategies. And I know the folks who've learned so much from ear to mouth have created the quality of user and contributor experience here in the cloud native communities. And it's really impressive. It's also a little sad to me. Wait a minute. Sad. What's sad about it? Well, you know, Jen, for the last three years, since, since we wrote this, the guidebook, and I've been publicizing this new version, you know, I've been on this for about 15 years now, right? I've been, and, and I've been having hundreds of these conversations on these topics, like just in this last year alone. And, and I've been attending talks by other community managers. And people, folks are really recognizing how, how it, the job is this role of stewardship and caretaking. And, and there's this one universal truth that I'm finding is that everyone is doing the similar right things. They've even greatly evolved some of the very same practices I've been parroting for 15 years with just the same automatic line, like lower the barriers to, to participation so users can see themselves become contributors and la da yada yada and, and I'm seeing people take that to the next level with their user experience work, with their data science work, and with so many great tools at hand. And in each case, when I come up and I, and I humbly ask, you know, I don't say, I've got a book to show you. I'm just like, how did you learn all of this? Where did you get it all from? And they say, almost universally, trial and error, sort of figured it out with myself after talking with a lot of people. Oh, okay. I, do you see why I'm sad, though? There's so much missed opportunity to mentor each other, to capture and share knowledge and to build community for people who are stewarding communities, you know? So many people having to go it alone while focusing all their energy on enabling others to be successful mm -hmm. and a little time on enabling themselves and those like them to be successful. Wow, yeah, I know what you're saying, I feel that. Um, but there are more reasons than just not knowing about your book for why folks aren't coming to the old guard. Grozard, Graybridge, Unix, Dungeon Masters, like yourself, to learn at your feet. Hmm. I have a feeling it's something to do with this vision of people learning at my feet. <laughs> uh, that's right, Carson. Maybe not you personally, because you know, hashtag not all men, but plenty of people from your generation of open source contributors start with RTFM and get worse from there. Do you know what happens when someone who's used to running the barriers everywhere because of their color or gender or sexual orientation gets hit with whatever is the modern equivalent of RTFM? It's like, just make the pull request. It's easy. Here are the docs now. Mm. Yeah, honestly, and I really don't know that. I mean, 
my privileges have helped me largely avoid those barriers and, and, and mask myself when, uh, when, I'm, when I'm faced with things that, um, that where my identities might have been blocked, you know. So, you know. I, get, I get that. And, you know, Carson, I'm glad you understand that. I mean, thank you for saying so. So I'm sure that you've heard from people how hard it is to get shut down by RTFM and an open source community, even if you felt welcome up to that point. Yeah, yeah. I know you've seen the, re the research results that Demetrius Cheatham from All in Open Source is getting. Mm -hmm. Where marginalized people are successful, it's most often in spite of supposedly lower barriers than due to them. Or it comes from starting their own actually inclusive communities as a way to feel sense of belonging. Right, right. Okay, so then here we are, minutes into this presentation. Where are we trying to get to? Well, you know, Jen, I don't think we're too far from the intended path. The one I wanted to focus on was, was how this old and the new haven't been finding ways to communicate and are isolated and duplicating efforts and in need of a person in a similar situation to share a coffee or tea with and talk. And it feels like we're starting to communicate better between the two of us. So how about if you tell me more about the role that you've played in open source communities? What has it taught you and how do you conduct things as a result? What would you be putting into a, a how-to guide or a good conversation with somebody? And, and I'll keep an open mind and see if I can find um, maybe a little bit less about the comparisons to the guide and more about my first experiences in open source and that led me to my awareness and knowledge and, and we can see where we can go from there. All right, yeah, so let me talk about my story a little bit. I'm going off script here. So I work with a number of open source communities. I work with dozens of them um, from the perspective of event marketing. I'm embedded at the office of the CTO at Red Hat um, within the open source program office. My journey in tech has been nonlinear. I started out in arts management. I was a nonprofit. I was in higher ed. I was a barista. I was a retail worker. I was a housekeeper. And so I had no direct pathway to being in open source communities. But one thing that keeps me in this space, um, and I've been in it for the past eight years, is knowing that I'm here to enable other people to, people to succeed. I'm here to make sure that I leave the world a better place than what I left it. And the aspirational aspect is what makes me feel like I belong here, despite all the barriers, of which there are many. Um, so of course, I wanna recognize my intersectionality. Um, I'm a woman. Uh, I'm a person who is a daughter of immigrants from the Philippines. I am uh, first generation. Um, I worked five jobs while I was in college. I too have ADHD with its comorbidities, yay, uh, including anxiety. Um, I identify as bisexual, even though I'm married and am passing as straight. Um, there are all sorts of things that I bring in to this work that I'm allowed to bring into, and I'm, for that, I'm really, really grateful. Um, I joke that sometimes I've found my island of misfit toys. And I love that you're one of my fit toy, Kirsten. Um, and you know, Not you're, broken, just funny looking. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, like Carson said, one of the things that we want to do, right, to promote diversity, equity, inclusion within the open source community is to talk more about our personal stories. And it's hard, right, because it means um, revealing vulnerability. It means letting access to parts of ourselves that maybe that we haven't revealed to others publicly before. And so, you know, I'm here to say, I'm ready to work with you, and with you, and with you, and with you, um, because I'm gonna embrace your difference, and I'm gonna embrace that difference because it's gonna bring the best things to me. I will always only expect the best things of other people, and to me, that's the joy of open source. That's what keeps me going when I have to deal with an a-hole, when I deal with someone who says you don't belong here. I realize that, you know what? Everyone's dealing with issues of belonging. And I wanna say I belong here, but you know what? Not only do I belong here, I wanna say to other people, you belong here too. So I'm in a non-technical role, but I help make communities successful. 
Like I said, I work with dozens of communities, like Fedora, like Kubernetes. And one of the things that I just love about the Kubernetes community is how accepted I am and how valued I am for my non-technical contributions. I'm seen as a cross-pollinator, I'm seen as a connector, I'm seen as someone who will help you find the answers. And really, I think that's what we're all trying to do, is just find the answers for what we need. Wow, that's, um, I, I didn't know what you were gonna say today, so thank you. Um, but there, and, and, there, and but I didn't, and without even knowing what you were gonna say, I knew, such that I could write in the script, that there was so much in there that was like my own experience and so much that is different. You know, um, I've, I, I alluded to the masking earlier, you know, some of the detail, like I, 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 I stopped working in, in restaurants. I was a chef for, for about five or six years in Santa Cruz and I never finished my college degree. Um, and, and I needed to get a job where I could get health insurance for my family. And um, so I started working in tech and my long hair and my white guy bro in the Silicon Valley meant that people didn't question my presence in the room. And I wrote down everything I didn't understand in the margins of my notes of every little list and I went and I studied and I came back with answers again and again and again until I understood what I was doing. So I faked it until I made it, right? Um, and the, and the, the level of difficulties, it's not about, I mean, this isn't a contest, right? It's like, I have experiences that help me understand yours. I haven't been through the same things that you've been through, but, but my sympathy and my empathy is solidly there for it because it makes, you know, it's, um, and I think that's really always something that's really helped me see during the time that I've been working in open source communities, um, that when that I started working in Fedora Docs project and as a you know, as a Docs contributor um, and took on a leadership role, and and the main thing for me was just always noticing that I suspected that other people, at least to some part, had in their minds some self doubt, like I did, um, that they that when they heard other people. Um, seeming like they all were, felt like they belonged and knew what they were doing and felt left out, that I figured everybody had some degree of that as well. So I just always focused on going to address the feelings in other people that I was worried about in myself. Now honestly, we call that codependency. And I have to admit to having had a 20 year codependent relationship with open source that I am working on, <laughs> really working on, uh, working on fixing right now. Um, but thank you all for giving me a little dose of, of being here today because that really helps my, my presence of things. Um, yeah, that's re that is really interesting. And I think that the, that, that for me, always keeping, always being, being willing to, to come back to first, um, uh, to remember what it's like to, to be new in the room at all times. And um, I know the, a lesson that I remember from my keto practice that I really enjoy, that just made sense to me was that the, the black belts, the people who knew the most were always in the room learning when the, when the basics were being taught every time. They were always working on the basics, you know, never forgetting to go back and practice over and over again these, <clears throat> these essential core things um, and, and, and recognizing that the, the, the <coughs> excuse me, that there's not, the difference between somebody who is new to a space and somebody who's been there for a while is just that. Someone's new and someone's been there for a while. You know, everyone's got something valid. And, and every year I learn things in open source um, from, from two new people that I hadn't even known before. So. Um, and, and I think I can say that, that it, just in terms of feeling like and, and, and trying to understand how we get here, how we got here today, you know, um, it definitely, definitely feels like it's this combination of this human, this societal conditioning, right, that, that has our, it's kept our senses all focused on what's going on in the moment in time, when I'm delivering, what's going on with it, I've got to get to this event, I've got to make something happen, um, and not being able to see where we are also in the context of history, right, and so it's, we all have a duty on both sides of that, to question where we are in the context of history and to answer that question for each other. Um, and so I think we may have a root cause analysis, you know, in some way forward. You know, what? I think we do. You know, we're beginning to turn the tide in many ways. The welcomeness and inclusive nature of the Kubernetes community really exemplifies that it is happening, but we still have a long way to go. In fact, one of our big risks on that journey is forgetting why we're doing it of leaving people out because we get too busy to share the stories with each other and new people. A danger of focusing too much on repeatable formulas of how to get things done, the what done. But we also need to deeply know and understand the why and to share the shared why with fellow practitioners. Yeah. And you know, I couldn't have said it better myself, which I, you know, I think is also the point. I, 
I, I've learned, to, if I sit in a room and just listen, a lot of times people will say the thing that I wanted to say, right? So, and, 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 it, and it's just been like that. This uh, last two decades, every year, I feel like I'm learning new things about open collaboration from people who are on just their first days and in, in, in participating in open source. Somebody's very first question will open my mind in a way I hadn't thought of before. And, and it's because this isn't a fixed knowledge base. It's, there are truths and practices that do seem to hold up to the test of time and others that have simply gone to the wayside. I mean, take the term RTFM, for example. There was a time when pe people like myself might have thought that there was a kindness to suggest that people go through the useful experience of being productively lost in code or content. And there may even be some honest heart in it, not one to just let people know the right answer, but give them a chance to discover the purpose in the answer. But even when that is true, it's also true that hitting people to teach them not to hit people is stupid and doesn't work. So correct. So I think I know what we should do now, but let me ask you and see if we're at the same conclusion. What's next? You know, Carson, I don't think we need another chapter or version of the open source way right now. Oh, thank God, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I really think is that we all need to reach out to each other, to other community stewards, other community caretakers, especially the ones from outside of your community, and just ask them to have coffee or tea with you and just talk. Talk about how it is, how it feels, what you need, what you like, what you want to see change what your vision is for the future. Let's build some actual community for ourselves amongst us practitioners for a change. Let's just start with that. You know, let's not try to bite off and chew a massive community vision. You know from experience, if you bring these kinds of people together, the vision will just come. Fucking right it will. So I fully agree with you, Jen. In fact, let's start right now. Do you want to go grab a cup of coffee and continue this conversation afterwards? Yeah. Does, does anybody else want to join us? us? So come join us at the Red Hat booth after the Q&A here to talk more how we can caretake our own community of caretakers. And thanks everyone for joining us for this bit of experimental theater, I mean, KubeCon talk. OK, then bye, everyone. Say bye, Karsten. Bye, Karsten. Thanks, everyone. So any questions? We do have a few minutes for Q&A questions, if anyone. How do you deal with um, imposter syndrome? So you talked a little bit about having some, getting into a community and not having, feeling sometimes like you're not being able to bring, like you're talking about like black belts, for example. Mm. Sometimes when you're going into a room, you're like, man, I can't contribute. I'm overwhelmed. I'm feeling like I'm potentially worthless or having even like self-doubt. How do you, in a, open source community tackle some of those feelings? Mm -hmm. I, can, I want to talk a little bit about that because, you know, as Carson said, there was a certain way of doing open source. And um, I would characterize that doing open, open source was treated like a hazing process, right? And it was accepted for many years as that, hey, that's the best way. We want to toughen people up. We want people to go through the paces. We want them to earn their stripes. And do we lose your mic? Lose your mic a little bit. So should I just hold it? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's just getting lost Drop in my hair. Drop the chin a little bit. <laughs> um, so you know, I think part of it is it, it's actually not just on the individual individual contributor to look out for themselves, right? So the entire purpose of community is that everyone's looking out for everyone, right? Um, and so you know, kind of what Carson was speaking to is that you know. Those of us who have been in community for a while really, I, I know this word's been overused, but we need to pivot. You know, we have to look at a new way of doing things. Yeah. Um, and, sometimes, and, some, and sometimes there's a fairness issue, right? People say, it's not fair. Why, why would I want to pivot when it worked for me? Why, yeah. Drop yeah. Okay. why do I, <laughs> sorry, okay. why, do, why do I need to, to change? Because, you know, the way that I did things worked. Um, but that assumes that the world is static. That assumes that community is static. Um, and it's not, right? So one thing that I've observed, so I, like I said, I used to work in education, is um, I've observed that current generations, generations that are up and coming, um, 
they question the way things are done. They don't accept it anymore. And I will say that as someone who was a Gen Xer, um, I was just kind of told to shut up and keep working, you know. And I don't know that I was fully aware of that, but when I talked to other Gen Xers, I realized, hey, that's what we were taught. But we were always thinking, you know what? This stuff is crazy. You know, what a bunch of shit. But we just didn't ever say it. And so I think what it took is it took a group of people to actually finally call out the bullshit, so to speak, being brave enough to do that. Um, but you can't do that, I think, always as an individual. Sometimes you have to. Like, for me, I had to put a stake in the ground around DEI stuff. Like, I co-founded the Asian network at Red Hat. And we didn't have one, which people think, how, how is that possible? Well, because we're, we're a company that's 82% white. And it's based on North Carolina. And so people are always super shocked that, you know, you need an E or a G. Aren't there a lot of people um, from Asian communities in tech? In certain parts of tech. So it's not uniform, right? So part of what I would also say is that, you know, if you're feeling a sense of imposter syndrome, and I'm super guilty of that, right? And part of it is that when you are feeling imposter syndrome, we're also looking for external validation. We're looking for someone to affirm our worth. We're looking for someone to say, hey, you know what, your contribution's awesome, but that's only one part of the story, right? And the thing is, all of us are gonna screw up. All of us screw up, right? And the part that I think is super important is the part that comes after screwing up, right? Do we go and put people in the middle and stone them to death? Or we say, you know what, it's okay. It's like, you know, fall down seven, get up eight, right? So we gotta recenter the vision as a community in terms of making sure people are supported and feel like they can be um, able to say something without being killed emotionally or psychologically. Because let's, let's face it, I think there's a bunch of us in this room who've had to encounter that, you know. Um, and we're lucky enough maybe to find our own resilience, but you know, we lose lots and lots of open source contributors because maybe they don't have that same kind of resilience. And so you know what, let's, let's create another pathway. Let's create another way of being. Uh, let's create a new infrastructure for onboarding people. Oh, yeah. Um, I was, I'm so glad I get to go after you. Um, the, the, that's what I mean, like, a, like a, that, that was perfect, thank you. So the, because my short answer is uh, I drank, right? Like I, and, and I suppressed the feelings of not belonging and not being there, um, and I never looked sideways to the other people around me, which I think is, Part of what I was hearing from what Jen was saying is that, <clears throat> as a Gen Xer, like am I, you know, I was so focused on what I was supposed to be doing and trying to ignore what was going on in my context and the feeling, I wasn't looking to catch that other people were having these experiences. So, the um, which can be good or you know, some other way. But <laughs> sorry, a story came to mind, but that's not appropriate for today. I think the the the. the the part that, that somebody started looking sideways, somebody called out the emperor's clothes, it has no clothes, right? And it's had the effect of, of allowing all of us to turn sideways and to talk to each other. And so, so to me, the, simp, the kind of the, I was gonna say simple solution, see I almost used the word simple. The solution to me is to try to reach out to other people to acknowledge where we're at and, and, um, uh, and, and know that mo know whoever you are as an individual, the odds are that there's somebody else in the room who is feeling a similar feeling and maybe uh, and maybe, is, and maybe is, has another, is it marginalized in another way even more so, or is feeling something, and so there's this degree in which that's, that's the peer mentoring, like we can be there for each other. So that simple, like I'm, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling awkward, and so, so I, I will often, uh, I, so I get the flip side of it, I get, you know, so I, can, I take advantage of my experience and expertise and, and my, my whiteness, and so my ability to speak, and so I will speak up and say the thing. That's, I'm like, I really don't understand what that was about. Can you explain to us? Or <laughs> you're, there's, call out the things that, other, that I know that people's brains aren't getting, probably like mine, the best ability. So that's like one side of it. I will basically call out that I'm, that I'm lost and I'm feeling like I don't know, like I don't belong, right? Um, the, but I, I didn't used to do that. So that's, and, and, and I can do that now because I'm, I have that comfort of that very solid privilege of, of I've actually earned what I've done, as a, and I'm not earned it. I mean, I've actually at the point where I've done the work. I'm like, I, I've done the years now instead of I had it behind me kind of thing, so. Um, oh, and, and I stopped drinking. I mean, that was part of the, <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah so, but that was part of what, um, I stopped, which, which was really to say that I stopped trying to do things to mask 
what was going on with me internally, and I started trying to address those underlying, be, um, underlying causes for the behaviors. Yeah. In the questions, we have, a, do we have room for one more? One or two, yeah, thanks. Uh, I was just wondering if you have any recommendations for like how to, how to protect or safeguard your emotional energy when you're dealing with community and like, I find it, if, if there's somebody who's struggling, I will over-worry about the person who is struggling, and that will warp my own, right? Like, recommendations around that? I, I mean, I, I want to say only two things on that one. One is we, we do have a chapter in the community open source way that tried to address that, right? And the problem with that chapter is it doesn't, it, it's, it's all about how, what you can do as an individual, right? And, and so the first response is like is, is that it's not, it's the organization that's supporting you. Who's, who, how are you. Who are you here representing for? How are they, what, what can they be doing to help take care of you? That's one part. But obviously in this moment, that's like a lot of, a big ask to have, so. Um. Yeah, I mean, there, there is a, a systemic portion, you know, that maybe we don't have a lot of control over. You know, you may have a workflow uh, that's meant to work you to death. Like, I'll just be honest, there are a lot of us in community that we're just expected to do every, like everything. And, um, and then people want us to also be their emotional caretakers too, right? Like that does happen um, a lot, especially because if you're an emotional, I mean, if you're a community manager, you're, you're at, at least for me, I feel like I have to responsible, I have to model uh, responsible emotional centeredness. And I think that's where the exhaustion comes in is that we don't have a way to like let go of the stuff that we're feeling upset about because we're caretaking the community we're caretaking um, members and we're all human beings. And I don't know that those of us who are doing the community building and the community management stuff, we're not really allowed to let our hair down, so to speak. We're not allowed to, to show, hey, I'm anxious about this too. Hey, this is kind of scary too, because you're trying to maintain a sense of um, equilibrium, I think, for your community, right? Like you don't want people uh, to panic. But honestly, we have to also just acknowledge those things. Like one of the things that I found like during the pandemic when I, you know, I have a team of people under me, anxiety was like the number one thing I was dealing with in my team, just anxiety. It wasn't even like anything specific. It was just anxiety around the uncertainty of the world. And I just finally said, you know what? I'm feeling it too. Like I have no idea what's going to happen next. You know, everyone keeps choking about like the, you know, the locusts and everything coming and I'm like, that might happen, you know? Um, and so, you know, part of being community is actually dealing with uncertainty a lot, you know? And then now it's exacerbated by everything that's happened um, the past few years, but I think also just means that we're awakening, right? Um, and this is part of the reason we're having this talk, is that, you know what? Let's go ahead and see if we can find a way um, to build an infrastructure for those of us that are doing the caretaking, because uh, maybe we're good at taking care of others, but maybe we can find a way to take care of each other, um, to maybe redistribute the workload so it's not just us in our community, but it's a whole community of caretakers, and then we can collectively have some sort of knowledge base um, to care for ourselves as well as our communities. And, and in case it wasn't obvious, the continual references back to the guidebook is the joke of how we all immediately dive to a tool. When we're like, we need a solution, and we all start pulling the tool out for it. This is the time to just put the tools away, Let's just build that sense of conversation between us and see what comes from it. The tools are there when we need them. <coughs> Excuse me. I think we only have a couple minutes left. Yeah, are we, I th are we at the time. the time? Do you have time for one more question? I don't know. Do we? Ah, we have the one minute mark, okay. Um, yeah, I think that that's probably yeah. all that I've got to say for the yeah. day. So. so thank you everybody, I appreciate um, your indulgence and your attendance. And like I said, find me and Carson. Um, we're gonna be hanging out at the Red Hat booth, but obviously we'll be here the rest of the week. You know, find us on the Twitters, on the LinkedIn. Um, you know, we want to talk to you. And so um, don't be shy about talking to us. Because uh, we want to help you, and we want you to help us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly, you know, really. Thank right. you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.